Morning, everyone, and um, good to see some of you. And a welcome to the first of what I think is going to be a few more of these sessions um, to introduce you to the program. And uh, you know, congratulations for many of you who are holding um, offers with us already. Uh, this is one of our most popular programs um, in the school, uh, the MSc in Creative Industries and Cultural Policy. So what I was hoping I would do today is to give you a little bit of an overview of what the program is like, introduce you to myself, I tell you a little bit about what you can expect from this program, and then in the end, we can take some questions and answers. Um, if it's related to academic content, um, I'll be able to answer that. If it's a bit more administrative, admissions related, I've got the lovely Shona with me who will be able to uh, take on those uh, questions for you. So just a little bit about myself. Uh, so my name is Dr. Rohit Das Gupta and I am the program convener for this uh, uh, program. Um, I'm an interdisciplinary scholar, as you can see, and uh, very broadly, uh, my research interests are quite varied. Um, so I've done quite a lot of work, um, especially around South Asia, um, looking at the role of communication for social change, um, I'm very interested in the cultural industries, uh, specifically in the film industry um, and also in the fashion and textiles industry. Um, I've also done uh, work on digital cultures, on identities, and also on the role of uh, communication and media in politics. And more broadly speaking, kind of my own background has been uh, in politics with quite a lot of involvement in policy development and implementation, um, which um, you know, I'm, I'm sure is something that all of you are quite interested in. So what is this program actually about? Uh, so this is quite an interdisciplinary program and we get um, students from very different backgrounds. So we get students with backgrounds in humanities and cultural studies, we get students with backgrounds in uh, social sciences like sociology, anthropology, and so on. And we also get quite a large number of students with a background in business and management studies. So in a way, what we try to do with this program is to give you um, the interdisciplinary grounding that is required in kind of understanding, uh, you know, what is the role of uh, culture and cultural policies in the, the kind of the broader um, economic and cultural policy forces that is shaping uh, the creative industries on an everyday basis. Um, the program itself is quite hands-on, so it's quite theoretical, so you're going to learn a lot about it from an academic perspective, but at the same time, and understanding, you know, what is, what is cultural production? What is the role of cultural production in today's everyday world? Um, and at the same time, uh, we are also going to give you a grounding in what is the reality looking like of working in the industry. What does policy development look like? Um, you know, who are the policymakers who are making cultural policy, and why is it important for us um, in today's contemporary world? Uh, the program itself is um, uh, divided across three semesters. So in the first semester, you're going to do a core course with me called Creative Industries and Cultural Policy, which is going to set out some of the key issues, um, some of the key concepts uh, that uh, you're going to be using um, for the rest of uh, this program. At the same time, you're going to be also taking two courses from uh, the Adam Smith Business School uh, called Managing Creativity and Innovation and Project Management. Um, the student feedback on these courses have been quite good. And again, kind of going with the interdisciplinary ethos of this program uh, to make sure that, you know, at the same time, you're also getting those very useful project management, um, innovation and creativity skills uh, in order to kind of, again, you know, go out into the world and, and work within these industries. Um, in the second semester, you're going to be taking um, a course called Creative Lives and Cultural Industries, which is going to introduce you to what is it like working in the creative industries itself. Um, and we get quite a lot of guest speakers as well on this course. So again, you get people from, um, you have a lot of policy workshops where you have people from the crafts industries, from the fashion industries, from the screen industries, uh, talking to you about their experiences of working within those industries. Um, and, and you know what are the kind of the main and key things to be aware of. Um, you will also be taking an optional course in your second semester. And um, in, in, in the next few slides, I'll show you the list of optional courses that you have. So you only take one, but there is actually quite a good list of uh, uh, 
uh, different options depending on what is your area of interest. Um, and at the same time, um, as we've had this year, um, some students are able to, you know, if, if it's not on our list, but if it's if it's a course that is taught in the second semester in the school or in the college, sometimes it is possible to also take that where we kind of have a one-to-one -one, um, uh, discussion with the course convener. So, you know, as uh, you are kind of deciding what to do, um, you know, it would be a good idea to also kind of maybe explore the college more broadly and see if there are any other courses that might be specifically you will be um, interested in. The other course that you will be doing across your semester one and semester two is a research methods course. The research methods course is really important, again, because it's going to give you those vital skills and tools that is required in order for you to then undertake the kind of the major piece of work um, that's going to be sort of your crowning glory in this uh, program, which is your dissertation, um, which is an independent piece of research that you're going to be doing um, on a particular topic that is of interest to you. And again, um, I've, in, in my slides, I've got some of the very, very diverse nature of topics from students that we have supervised um, over the last few years. Um, in terms of research methods, um, you know, uh, students kind of always ask us, you know, what kind of methods you will, will I be learning? It's a very, very hands-on course. So you are going to be learning uh, you know, things that we use all the time in media and cultural and creative industries, things like textual analysis, how do you do content analysis, um, but also doing things like empirical research, such as ethnography, being able to do surveys, being able to do questionnaires, being able to do interviews and focus groups. So all in all, giving you the breadth of research skills that you would be required in order to undertake your dissertation and you know, deciding on what kind of research methods you think would be the best for you in terms of, again, of the project that you will decide over the course of this uh, one-year program. The other thing I should probably point out now, um, you know, before kind of going into more in-depth discussion is that, you know, most of our students come with quite an open mind about, you know, what is an area that they're interested in and try and use the first two semesters to kind of develop that broad breadth of understanding of all the different issues and all the different sectors within the creative industries. And then you could decide what um, you feel would be, um, you know, the most um, relevant for you and for your future and what you think would be um, uh, interesting for you in terms of what you want to get out um, of this program and as you kind of move into your career. Uh, but also, we do have some students who kind of come in with a full-fledged idea that, you know, this is what I want to work on. This is the industry that I'm most kind of keen on. Um, and again, you know, it's, 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 it's about making sure that we are able to support you and develop you as you work towards the big piece of program. Um, the thing to also remember is that for a lot of students, um, you know, the, the dissertation is also quite important because, you know, when you're going out into um, the kind of the employment world, um, it's, 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 it's a major piece of project that you've undertaken where you've done your own independent research, come up with your own research questions, and then you've kind of, uh, you know, uh, um, answered those questions. What I'm going to do now is quickly tell you some of the uh, different optional courses that we have. So as I said, um, you've, we've got optionals that is um, across the entire uh, uh, college, but also from outside the college. Um, so we've got courses offered by the Adam Smith Business School. Again, um, if that is an area of your interest, so you can take optionals in uh, courses like digital transformation, internationalization of small and medium enterprises. If you're interested more in understanding some of the very key issues of copyright and intellectual property um, related to the creative industries, uh, you would be interested in intellectual property law. The thing to also mention about intellectual property law is you do not need a background uh, in law of any kind to take on this course. And that's because this particular course has been written uh, with um, uh, non-legal students and for creative and cultural industry students particularly in mind. So, so, so a lot of what you will be hearing from intellectual property law is going to be more geared towards issues of media, issues of culture and creative industries. Um, at the same time, we also offer some optional courses within the school. Um, so one of our most popular ones over here is issues and audience management, understanding um, uh, you know, how audiences work, the, the changing nature of audiences, especially with COVID, we've seen how 
um, different creative sectors have uh, risen up to the challenge and are finding new ways of engaging with um, audiences, whether it's, um, uh, you know, audiences and kind of a, a, a physical things like theater, but also thinking about audiences in terms of, you know, the, the, the kind of the big boom that we've seen within uh, streaming platforms and so on. Uh, we also have a really, really um, interesting um, uh, optional course called Festivals, which is offered uh, by the school. Um, we, it, it's again a quite a popular course. Um, we manage to get a few seats on it all the time because of how popular it is, and not all students kind of manage to get the get their first preference. So I would always say, you know, have a quick think about what kind of optionals you are interested in, and 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 make your kind of interest in it known quite early, uh, because some of these get filled up pretty soon because of again uh, the, the the large interest that we get from students. But as I said, in addition to these optionals that is part of this program. If there are other optionals uh, in the semester too that you've seen that uh, the school is offering or the college is offering um, that you think you might be interested in, um, it's always a good idea to get in touch with me quite early on and telling me that, and then I can have a discussion with the course convener to see if it's possible for you to then take on the course. Sometimes it's possible, and we have had some successes in, in previous years. Sometimes because of um, timetable clashes, it might not be possible. Um, so again, have a look at these courses, but also if you're interested, you could have a look at other things that's offered by the college. In terms of the teaching format for each of our courses, they're going to last about 10 weeks. Um, and this includes uh, uh, seminars, guest lectures, uh, tutorials, group work, presentations, as well as academic writing support. Um, so, so a typical 30 credit course would be equivalent to around 30 hours of contact teaching. Um, and that would be both kind of, you know, all of these lectures, seminars, guest lectures, uh, tutorials. You will also be able to have um, quite intensive tutorials with your um, lecturers when it comes to things like your assessments. Uh, assessments. Uh, and all lecturers also have weekly office hours for around two to three hours. Um, and it is possible for you to book a time with them um, and have a one-to-one -one meeting as well. So again, um, the, the idea is to make sure that you have a good range of different uh, teaching methods. In terms of our assessments as well, um, it's quite diverse. Um, so in addition to essays, um, reports, and presentations, we also have oral methods in, in some of the courses. So again, you can have a quick look, if you want, through our um, uh, through the different courses, and you can see uh, what are the different kind of um, assessment methods. As far as I understand, um, none of our courses have any exams attached to it. Um, at, uh, I mean, some of the optionals might, uh, the ones that we, that's not part of our uh, list, but, uh, but you might want to just have a check on that. But, but as far as the program is concerned, um, our programs don't have any exams. It's all uh, via essays, reports, and presentations. What I'm going to do, uh, thought I would be quite interested for you, uh, interesting for you, is to have an understanding of what a typical um, course would look like. So this is a course that I convene in the first semester, uh, which is the core course, Creative Industries and Cultural Policy. Um, now, as you can see from this particular um, a list of topics, they are quite varied. So, and, and you also have different guest lecturers and instructors who come in and spe uh, speak on it. So the way I have broken my uh, CICP course is in three bits. So the first bit is the academic lectures, which is what you see over here. The second bit is industry and policy speakers. This is, uh, I'll, I'll show that to you in the next slide. So we get quite a lot of really high profile industry speakers and pro policy makers coming in speak to, speaking to us. And then every week you also have a seminar. So the seminar, uh, seminar teaching is small groups of students where you know uh, we we discuss the reading of that week. We discuss some of the key topics of the week, um, and you might also be given some exercises to do within the class. So I'm not going to I'm not going to go through this list of um, the different topics that we have here. But as you can see, they're quite diverse. You know, you kind of start off with, of course, you know, what are the creative and cultural industries? Moving on to understanding more about kind of consumption patterns uh, and and how you consume culture in the digital age. Um, then going back to some of the kind of the key concepts around globalization, cultural in, in, imperialism, the move from cultural industry to a creative economy, uh, the role of festivals in policy. 
um, followed by then you looking at and understanding things like the role of culture in regeneration, so the creative city and cultural um, quarter, the role again of socially engaged art, part, part of how um, government policy is geared towards using culture as a form of regen. Um, moving on to popular music industry, um, and then again, uh, kind, of, kind of coming from my own research interests, uh, I, I end up doing a lecture on global Bollywood and film policies in India. Um, as I said, uh, we do also have um, industry speaker, industry and policy speakers, um, really, really high profile people who come and speak to us about uh, their briefs and how they make policy. So we've had, for instance, uh, this year, we had Lord Wilf Stevenson, who was the cultural advisor to the former prime minister, Gordon Brown, um, and also a past director of the British Film Institute. Um, and, and now he is a peer and makes law. Uh, we also have people uh, such as the deputy mayor of London for culture and creative industries, Justin Simmons. Um, and we also get people working within uh, the sector. So people from, uh, uh, for example, curators from the British Museum, um, and also film uh, film programmers and cultural journalists. So, so it's it's about making sure that you're not just getting, um, you know, an academic uh, understanding of these topics, but also listening from people who are making cultural policy, who are working within the creative sector as well. Um, the program is academic. The program is also very interdisciplinary. We've got a lot of international staff who will bring in very global perspectives about their work in the culture and creative industries. And you get real hands-on research training, as I said. Um, uh, the, the, the research methods uh, course is broken into two bits in the first semester and second semester. So in the first bit, we kind of front load you with the different methods. And in the second year, we take a more workshop approach, getting you to start applying those methods into little kind of um, uh, research projects that you undertake as part of that course. Um, and finally, as I said, you know, it all kind of culminates into this amazing um, uh, and, and something I know students sometimes get a little scared about uh, writing this 12,000 word dissertation, but also, you know, um, our experience has shown that it's it's the bit that students have enjoyed the most because you are it's, it's a topic that you are really really interested in it's a topic that you're willing to devote up to three months of your life in and kind of completely immerse yourself in um, so you will be designing your own topic you can use a range of research methods that you will have been taught across the program um, and you work closely with a supervisor so you have a one supervisor with whom you have one-to-one -one meetings you have regular supervision meetings who's going to read through some of your drafts who's going to make sure that you're going the right way and is going to provide you with some of the guidance and expertise um, that you will require in terms of your um, research project. Um, as you can again see from this um, list of um, topics that I've got over here, uh, it's really, really diverse. You know, we've got students who are interested in looking at, um, at the role of creative cities like Beijing and Shanghai, looking at the role of social media influencers, looking at the role of new media and religion, looking at uh, popular television and um, reality shows. Uh, fashion blogging, uh, consumption patterns, soft power. So, you know, we get a range of different interests in terms of what students are interested in. Um, and again, um, within our team, we will have the expertise uh, to be able to supervise any of the kind of the different topics of creative industries that you might be um, interested in as part of this course. And ultimately, for our students, you know, it's about, make, again, making you employable, making you ready to go out and, and, and work in the field. Um, so, you know, some of our students end up taking a management role in established organizations, others pursue more entrepreneurial path. We've got students who end up wanting to do a PhD and, and, and some of them have been very successful in also getting funding to do their PhD. Um, they go into a wide range of careers in the media and cultural industries um, as editors in newspapers and broadcast media, journalism, advertising, management consultancy, and, and also the kind of the conversion to postgraduate research uh, and academic careers. So um, again, given the interdisciplinary nature of this program, 
um, we've been really, really fortunate uh, that, you know, that our students have told us in terms of feedback that, you know, the employability, that they, they felt more employable. Um, at the same time, we also have a student, uh, we have student career services uh, within uh, the university uh, who will be able to support you in terms of, you know, crafting your CV, uh, making sure that, you know, you're working towards getting those interviews, making sure you're, you're able to get jobs at, at the end of the program. Um, and and, and that, that, that's, that is also available um, from within uh, the university. So I think that's about it. That was a bit of a whistle-top store of uh, what the program was all about.